Hi, I'm Corbett Lensford from Green Dream Group in Chicago. On behalf of the Building Performance Workshop, I'd like to demonstrate the HERS Rater required testing for Energy Star Homes version 3. First of all, as a HERS Rater, you're going to be getting a checklist that the installer filled out. It's going to look like this. The installer has done a number of tests themselves, um, and they've been, you're going to check them according to the uh, instructions on your checklist. Your checklist looks like this. Now what we're going to be demonstrating in this video are just our highlighted options. There are certain line items on your checklist that are actual hands-on tests. Those are what we're going to be demonstrating in this video today. So uh, if it is a test on this, we're going to be going over it and how exactly to do it. You'll be able to see us do it in this particular case and you'll be able to apply it in every house that you do for Energy Star Homes version 3. This video is created by Building Performance Workshop, not on behalf of Energy Star, the Department of Energy, or the Environmental Protection Agency. We, these are our views and my demonstration specifically. So um, we just happened to notice when we went through our Raider training for Energy Star version 3 that there was a number of complicated tests in the protocol. That's why we made this video for our audience. So please don't take these as the express views of Energy Star, the DOE, or the EPA. The first test item on our checklist is 1.3, which is Rater Verified Supply and Return Static Pressures. This has been measured already by the installer, uh, so we're just going to be verifying that it matches the installer's numbers. Now, we are obviously in a CAS that is not going to be part of an Energy Star version 3 certified home, but you get the idea. We're going to do all the same tests. So the first thing is I'm going to find the holes that my installer drilled, uh, and in this case we're here, which is above the air conditioning coil. Um, that's not technically where it's supposed to be, but we're going to use the installer's holes because that's very important that we match our numbers to the installer's numbers. So we're going to be able to put our static pressure probe into this hole, kick on our air handler, and what we see here is that we've got 0 0.092 inches of water column. We're going to compare that with the installer's supply static pressure reading. So my installer reported a supply static pressure of 0 0.085. Since what we got is 0 0.092, we're going to compare the one to the other, and it turns out that it is less than 110% of the installer's number, so that's good. And they reported a 0 0.150 return static pressure, and what we got is 0 0.157, and that also matches up. So we're good to go. Number 2.8, bedroom pressure balancing. This item has two options. Option A is to go around the house measuring the square inches for transfer grills and jumper ducts and undercuts on the doors for each bedroom to be, uh, have its pressure relieved to the main area. Or you can B, simply pressure test each bedroom with the air handler running. Since that's easier and a little less time consuming, we're just going to do that. I've got my manometer. I'm going to measure the pressure in the room with reference to my main space, which I'm standing in, while the air handler is running. So I toss this into the room, close my bedroom door. Okay. We can see that the pressure in this room with reference to the main body of the house is almost half a pascal, which is well below the three pascal limit that it's set by Energy Star. 4.1, total duct leakage. This number needs to be less than or equal to six CFM per hundred square feet. So we are in a thousand square foot house right now. The duct leakage total needs to be 60 CFM or less at 25 pascals. 4.2 is duct leakage to outside only. So of that 60 that were allowed, no more than 40 or 4 CFM per 100 square feet of floor space can be going outside. Uh, now there's a caveat to this. If you have a duct system and an air handler that is totally inside the envelope, and I would be very careful about defining it that way because hardly any home that I've ever seen actually has that. If they're all exposed and inside the living space where you can see them, then you can feel free to do that. Now you need also the envelope leakage to be less than half of what the prescriptive air leakage limits are for your climate zone. So for example, in Illinois, we've got a, an air leakage uh, limit of four air changes per hour at 50. We would need to be at two in order to have this work out. Alternatively, we don't have to do the duct leakage to outside, which is a slightly more complicated test where we've got the duct testing device and the blower door running at the same time if the total duct leakage is less than or equal to 4 CFM per 100 square feet. So if that happens, then we don't have to run the two outside test. And again, please visit our duct blaster testing video if you need a review of that test. 
I would like to demonstrate for you, however, how to do a duct leakage test on a balanced whole house ventilation system. This is going to be centered around a box, an HRV or an ERV. It's going to have four ducts coming out of it. Two of them are going to go to outside, and two of them are going to come into the house. We're going to have a supply and an exhaust on each one of those sets. So you need to go outside the house, find the supply and exhaust, block those off to seal them. And then you need to come inside the house and find all of the exhaust and supply terminals and seal those off as well. And then we'll run a uh, total duct leakage test on that and see if it passes muster. So once we've switched the unit off, we're going to take the cover off and we're going to take the filters out of it just like we would on a forced air system. There are two filters, one on the exhaust side and one on the supply side. So here's an example of an exhaust port. We're in a bathroom right now. We're going to seal this off. Now this uh, port actually has the unique feature of being able to be screwed closed, which is kind of cool. If you don't have that feature, then you would just be able to use, uh, we are using, for example, just press and seal. Um, since we're doing a depressurization test, this is going to get sucked onto the register as soon as we kick on the duct blaster. So now that we have all the intentional openings in the mechanical ventilation system sealed up, we're going to go ahead and run the test. Okay, so unfortunately we couldn't get up to 25 pascals, which is not a bad thing actually because the the way that this duct system is designed, very small ducts, a lot of turns and bends and uh, corners and things like that. So it was hard for us to get it up to pressure all the way to the end of where we've got our pressure tap in the ductwork. But we do see that we've got a flow of 232 CFM at 25 pascals. It's doing the at 25 uh, equation. That, since we're in a house now that's 4,000 square feet, we are allowed a total duct leakage of 240 CFM at 25 pascals. Since this is under 240, we pass this system. Number five, whole house ventilation rate. And we need to test this just because something says that it runs at 100 CFM or whatever it is doesn't mean it actually performs that way. So that's why it's very important to test this. Now, what we're using here is the uh, flow pan, which is called the flow meter from Energy Conservatory. I call it flow pan. Uh, we're testing the exhaust through all of the exhausts going out of the house, and then we're going to test the exhaust from outside that's being exhausted to inside. So we're testing on the suction side of both uh, sides of the equation. We're just going to add all of the bath exhausts that, act, that are going into the out port on the HRV together. So that's just simple addition. And then on the outside, when we test the intake, with this same tool, we're just gonna take that, and hopefully they're balanced, they would be the same number if that's true. So we're gonna go ahead and test this. We can see that we're getting negative 0.8 pascals in here. This, since we're using a, an off-brand manometer from the tool that we're using to test the flow, we have to do a conversion, which is available on the side of the tool itself. So when we compare the pressure reading in this calibrated flow pan with the uh, table, we find out that it's about 9 CFM. So we would do this same procedure on every single bathroom in the house, add them all up. Also, I would want to make sure that the installer who designed this system uh, had designed it to be at the same ventilation rate as I'm testing today. It needs to be between 100% and 120% of that number. 8.1, kitchen exhaust. So we're going to measure the exhaust through this range hood, and we're going to make sure that it meets one of two options in the checklist. So what I'm going to use right here is our manometer from Energy Conservatory that's hooked up with the Energy Conservatory flow meter. This is a uh, less than $200 piece of equipment, and it's good because it can get into a tight space here. But I'd have a hard time getting a flow hood underneath this, this area. So what we need to do is just configure this properly, and then we're going to add. We've got two vents underneath this uh, range hood. So now we simply add the left side to the right side, and that equals our total exhaust, and we get a total of 106 CFM intermittent, which meets and exceeds, actually, our 100 CFM intermittent requirement from Energy Star. 8.2, bath exhaust. Now we're going to follow exactly the same protocol as we did in the kitchen for the bath. So I've got my flow pan wired up with the manometer, and I'm going to go ahead and kick my exhaust fan on completely cover the fan. 
Now, you notice I'm starting with a wide open configuration. That's important because I don't want to restrict the flow through the fan. If I start with it really scaled down, I will get a reading, but it'll be a reading that's affected by the fact that I'm trying to squeeze a lot of air through a very small opening. So I start with it all the way open, and then I scale my way down. So I start with an open configuration. I'm already getting over 50 CFM. That meets and exceeds Energy Star's 50 CFM intermittent standard for Energy Star. Number 10.1, 10.2, and 10.3 is all about combustion appliances. If you have any atmospherically vented appliances or fireplaces or, God forbid, any unvented combustion appliances, you're going to need to do safety testing and combustion testing. If you need to do that, please visit our videos that are titled Combustion Analysis and Safety Testing in this series. In the meantime, I hope that that makes it clear to you on what's required for the upcoming version 3 standards. Thank you very much for watching. Tune in next time.